Hey everybody, it's Dr. Batat with Oracle Hearing Center. I'm here today chatting with my really, really good friend, Olivia Van Wagner, who's also an audiologist. And um, we wanted to talk a little bit about things that come up for us with our patients when they have hearing aids, hearing loss, issues with their family. We were just saying, why are we talking about their families? Um, and why that's really, really important. So um, tune in. We have a couple of ideas, some discussions, some thoughts and reflections, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So going back to what we were saying, because we actually were, we're continuing a conversation. Why is it important for families to be involved in this process when somebody, when that one person has the hearing loss? So for me, it's important because, well, for, for, for all of us in hearing care is because communication is about connection. Mm -hmm. And who do we connect with primarily as our family and our blood family and our family of choice, the people we spend our time with. Mm -hmm. And that connection gets so uh, muddled um, when hearing starts to um, deteriorate and then when you get hearing aids, the expectation of everyone and in particular the family is ba -bum, now mom and dad can hear perfectly again. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a real uh, struggle for them to understand how hearing aids that cost so much, I still can't talk with them the way I can my sister or brother or uh, the way I want to or what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's lots of reasons why, but I think those folks really need to hear that information so that they can then be supportive to their family member who's bought the hearing aids mm -hmm. instead of questioning and challenging and creating, you know, maybe doubt or, or um, you know, confusion or buyer's remorse or any of those things, mm -hmm. not intentionally, mm -hmm. but it just is, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you. I think the thing that comes up for me is um, while we think that hearing aids are going to fix it, we are, th we are assuming that, okay, now my parents or my brother or my wife, my husband has a hearing aid, their, their hearing should be right. so much better. I think what comes up for me as the audiologist and the practitioner is what are you doing with that to help them improve, right? We think it's just a device and it's not just a device. Yeah. It's so much more than that. Um, it's how we speak to them, where we go, how we make decisions and where we even sit at a table, at a restaurant, which restaurant we choose. We think it's just about a widget and it's really hearing well has so much more to do with how we're talking to one another yeah. um, than anything. And that's one of the things that is so important to me as an audiologist. I know you talk about it a lot. How are we talking to our family? Are we talking from a, a room away? Are we turned and we're not looking at them? Right. Are we close enough for, for them to hear us, um, to see our faces or our heads stuck in a, 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 a refrigerator? while we're asking them a question, all those things are so important and we don't realize how important they are. Yeah, even once you get the hearing aids, those things are still important. And I think that's what a lot of family members don't understand and nobody's told them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not, no finger pointing going on here. It's, the idea is not just to support the user, but to support their community, their connection community, and help them understand that yeah, there's damage. So yeah, hearing aids will definitely improve the situation, mm -hmm. but your hearing nerve doesn't go back to being 20 years old. You you still have um, difficulty with understanding, even though you're hearing better. Mm -hmm. And then that throws the people off because they expect people, because we don't really talk about hearing loss as, as, as being more than just volume you know it's also understanding processing, processing. power yeah it's and i tell people it's a brain uh, reprocessing uh, uh process really we're retraining your brain to hear again in a different way it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be hearing that you had but it's going to be training you to take in sounds in a different way to help you hear with less effort yeah um that's that's what i try to convey to people. Um, I think that a lot of times we fall into the habit of everything that we're doing on the daily, we're washing dishes and having a conversation. 
but really people with hearing loss want you to know that they need you to slow down. Yeah. They need you to enunciate, but not yell or speak. Um, but they also need to ask, they have a responsibility to that too. I feel they right. have a responsibility to simply say, you know, I heard that you wanted to go to the grocery store, but I didn't catch the rest of that sentence instead of what, which yeah. indicates they missed the whole entire sentence, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, so to me, hearing and communicating better ha is a responsibility um, uh, that, that everybody yeah, involved, all parties, right? right? It's not just on the hearing, the person with a hearing loss, right. it's not just on their partner but everybody has a responsibility to come to the table and say, I'm gonna do my part. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you said about, um, you know, don't just say what, you know, never underestimate the, uh, the benefit of rephrasing, not only repeating what you say, but rephrase it. Because the way the words get muffled because of the hearing loss, that the hearing aid's trying to support, but can't 100%, because it doesn't have 100% anatomy anymore, but you could rephrase it in a way that those words come through more clearly than the first one you used. And so now the person understands that you need extra broccoli. Um, and you know, it, it, it works better to rephrase it instead of just say the same thing over. I said, duh, you know, the same thing over. All right, because they're missing the same sounds over again. and over again, instead of getting more contextual cues. And when you're somebody who has a hearing loss, Believe it or not, you're not just relying on um, lip reading, speech reading, or the auditory signal, but you are looking at everything. What are the, the words that person used? What are their expressions? How are people reacting? You're, you're, you're interpreting so much and you're working so yeah. hard to, to learn so much about what they're saying. So the more information we really give them in Perfect. a different way, yeah the easier it will be for them to understand it. And coming to them with some compassion. I understand you might have repeated maybe five different times. <laughs> or for years. Or for years. <laughs> That's a toughie, but imagine how they how embarrassed they might feel not picking up the first yeah. one, two, or even three times. Yeah. And I think my concern for me as the audiologist is, will they be willing to engage again mm -hmm. if they've missed it a few times it's a, it's embarrassing yeah right yeah. never mind or yeah it, or, you know you, you can just see people tuning out yeah yeah why yeah. should i be engaged in a conversation if i'm not going to be able to stay on topic or respond the right way i'm just going to sit here and observe and to me maybe that's that's the scariest part of hearing loss you know losing the engagement for the sure. withdrawal yeah. yeah and like you were saying you you know all the efforts that people are putting in that's the effort that the hearing aid is helping to reduce and and that's the effort you want reduced for cognitive wellness mm -hmm. and uh, we, we just don't appreciate and that effort begins in your 40s and 50s it's like there's no such thing as reader hearing aids, you know, mm -hmm. but we get reader glasses and don't think anything of it. And you immediately, when you put those reader glasses on you, you just kind of go, oh, yeah, you know, but you don't need Coke glasses. You just need the readers. Well, hearing aids, you know, by the time you get hearing aids, you've needed readers for a really long time and the system is really fatigued. So the person does need to sometimes hear it repeated because they're needing to make sure they got what they, you know, what you said. Um, so it's it's very multi-layered. Yeah, yeah. Or there might be a processing delay. It's like, oh, I heard what you said, but I couldn't quite make sense of it, or I got it like a minute or two later, or a few seconds later. Um, and I think we don't think about that cognitive load as much as we might. Um, and I, I know that in this time of COVID where people have been withdrawn, it's really, really affected us and not just one of us, not a few of us, all of Everyone. us, not socially being engaged as much as we were before, I feel has such a strong impact on our cognitive load and function and ability to handle so many different things, yes. be in different social situations, multitask, um, think, be quick to our feet and think quickly. So um, engagement to me is all about feeling fulfilled, having a sense of purpose, being connected to people through relationships and friendships. And without that, 
or with that diminished, I feel that pe I feel I've seen, at least in 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 my practice in my clinic, that people's cognitive load or ability to handle more has been affected. I, I think you're spot yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, and it's worrisome. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. So when I when we treat hearing loss, I feel like we're not simply isolating treating hearing loss. We're we're treating function. Yeah. No question. Right? And yep. engagement um, and relationships, really. Yep, that yep. goes right back to the beginning yep. of, you know, in that connection. And that's what we're all so hungry for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if we're together, but wearing masks, that's 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 a loss of connection. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something we can talk of or that we have been talking about, but it's just um, one more piece of, of connection that we're, we're efforting for. Yeah, no. And for, and... And I want to say that I mean, you walked in and and wore masks. We're careful. We're but you took off your mask, and I said, I miss your face. I miss <laughs> seeing your smile. Like we miss that. We crave that. We need it. I think that it promotes a feeling of well-being. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And give and take, yeah. and you know, re re reciprocating. Right. Yes. yes. So without that, without that, where are we? So again. These things are these are the things that come up when we think about treating hearing loss, and we don't think they come up. We don't think that it's a factor, but it really absolutely is. Yeah, we just want to get that conversation out there and start talking about yeah. it because yeah. it's not just numbers and and where your your zeros and X's fall. It's it's a whole whole approach, a holistic approach, a whole uh, person, your whole person. Yeah. So yeah. So. Um, Stay tuned because I think there's so much more uh, we have to, to reflect on, to talk about, but um, we just wanted to get the conversation started yeah. on it and hopefully more to come soon. Sounds good. All right. Take care. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.